Labour peer Lord Adonis has apologised for sharing a cartoon mocking Sajid Javed's background. It showed the new Home Secretary with the caption, I just want to settle in, get organised, then deport my parents. Sajid's father has passed away. Uh, by his own rhetoric, Lord Adonis is a privileged white peer to racially humiliate the son of a Muslim immigrant merely for choosing a different political party is racism. Nobody's left-wing status immunises them from racism. And this isn't on the only example of racism directed at Javed from the left. He's been called an Uncle Tom and a coconut. Insults designed to racially shame minorities who think outside the left-wing box. Such abuse encourages political apartheid. If you call for integration, social mobility and diversity, you cannot also object along racial lines to political diversity. Now, I've never voted Conservative in my life, uh, but the left don't own minorities. So ditch the colonialism, thanks. We can think for ourselves. Majid, I completely agree with you. I think that racism, wherever it occurs, is despicable. And uh, let's just hear from Andrew Adonis, who did comment on that tweet, and this is what he said. Uh, on reflection, Sajid, I think the cartoon is too personal and in poor taste. I have deleted it. I am sorry, Andrew. And I also was on Twitter that day uh, calling out the racism that Sajid Javid was experiencing with people using those racial terms of racial abuse. And I am someone who gets trolled by racists every single day. They come from both sides, usually in my case from the far right, but I do get trolled by the left sometimes as well. And it's there is no place in public or any other discourse for racism. It has to be called out regardless of where it is on the political spectrum. It is not a political issue. It is an issue of racism and it is completely wrong. Um, in terms of the bigger issue you raise about this idea that the left have a monopoly on the black vote, I agree with you. I think there is an imperialist attitude in some parts of the left that historically the left have enjoyed the vote for the majority of black and minority ethnic people. And it's quite an interesting phenomenon because if you think about it, so many ethnic minority communities in this country do have values that emphasise enterprise, faith, uh, strong families, social mobility. You know, they are, they are in some ways... Traditional small conservative seed, values. Traditional yeah. conservative values. And yeah, yeah. the question is not why aren't there... Uh, black Conservatives, but why aren't there more? And that is because the Conservative Party have failed to have policies and rhetoric that appeal to people from minority backgrounds, even when they are natural Conservatives. Yeah. And this Windrush scandal is the latest example of something that makes many minority people feel alienated from the Conservatives. So I think that is an, a, a problem for the Conservatives, and I absolutely agree. We should not look at ethnic minority people with this single narrative idea. They're all some lump who are left-wing. So, That's absolute so, nonsense. Well, what has what is actually highlighted all this is you've got Sajid Javid, who is the son of an immigrant, a bus driver's son, who has done incredibly well, has got a successful business record, comes into parliament, has been a cabinet minister, held different positions, done well in all of them, and is now the first ethnic minority individual to hold one of the great offices of state, Home Secretary. And it is terrific. I think it's something this country mm, yeah. should yeah. celebrate. Yeah, yeah. And I think he's going to do a great job, because he started off straight away by saying, we've had a hostile and attitude to immigration, I'm going to change that to a compliant and, attitude to immigration. He did what, vote for it, so, to be so, fair. But, he did but vote also, for now, it. Here's the other point. Here, look how far we've come. In the 80s, we had only four ethnic minority MPs and one in the House of Lords. Mm. Today, there are almost 100 between the two houses it, uh, and a cabinet minister. And soon, yeah. we'll have an ethnic minority prime minister in this country. And one of those first oh, four see. was Diane Abbott, yeah. who was one of the first yeah. four black yes. MPs elected, who stood yeah. up and, in Parliament, at the dispatch box, also I condemned I think just, the racist abuse that Sajid Javid... Javid it's, it's, it's against, host, uh, it's against uh, illegal immigration. There is a degree of hostility. But let's move away from the political side for a moment and just yes. more on the sort of freedom of speech, because I remember a few weeks ago, you and I debated a so-called Scottish comedian, yeah. and he did a video, I think, of a, a, his girlfriend's dog yeah. doing doing Heil Hitler salutes and saying... To, to the CK, yes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and you then, as I recall, you seem to be in support of him doing a jokey video, but you appear mm -hmm. to be against a jokey cartoon. Now, I might have got this yeah. wrong. So let me let me clarify that Go for on. you. Um, I think the, the distinction in that debate, if you will recall, was mm -hmm. that he, uh, this young lad, was criminalised for a terrible joke, and I made it very clear in that debate that I was... I found the joke offensive because it involved uh, shouting she Hail at this dog and making it perform Nazi salutes. I didn't think it was funny, but my point was nobody should be criminalised for a bad joke. It would be the equivalent of Lord Adonis being criminalised mm, for this bad okay. tweet. And so I think that's slightly different. What I'm talking about here is I was offended at that and I'm Final offended at this. Final point for me yeah. is, is 
is the cartoon racist or is it sentiments racist in your no, view? No, it's the idea that it's the idea that one skin colour defines what one should think politically, and the the, the notion, the tendency among some on the left uh, that uh, they own or they monopolise the ethnic minority vote. And, and let me show you Jeremy Corbyn's tweet okay. to demonstrate sure. this, right? because I find this incredibly racially patronising. This tweet is he said that um, only Labour can be trusted to unlock the talent of Black, Asian, and minority ethnic people and it's that kind of you know there's a but bigotry of low expectations see, that is here. so wrong yes so sad yes because you're here not we are, here, are you? 19 I'm, I'm an independent yeah, person, indeed, but, yeah. but, but it's, so, it's so sad the early 1960s we're talking about over 50 years ago that Martin Luther King yeah. says judge me not by the color of my skin but the content of my character and here we have today comments like Uncle Tom, yep. Coconut. I yeah, mean, can it's I, can repulsive. I, read, I think it's, we, it's so these? sad that right. today we, it should not be an issue at all. We've come a long way. Yeah, yeah. Anyone can get anywhere, regardless of race, regardless of religion, of skin, regardless yeah. of background. Yeah. This is an aspirational country with opportunity for all. Yep. Carol, please. Um, I find it incredible how Lord Adonis apologises for, for um, the cartoon he put out there as if it's OK now, because he said, sorry, it's really not OK. And let's just look at this, uh, some of the other vile examples of stuff that was put out on Twitter. Listen to, and this was by named Labour campaigners. Auntie Amber replaced by Uncle Tom, the most overcooked coconut in the history of coconutism, has become Home Secretary. Tory scum hiding behind a brown coconut in the, in the new Home Secretary. You know, just to say, we don't know they're late. They purport to be. We Some can't of them were say. Named. Some what, of them, not these particular okay, ones, but lots of them were named. Okay. As a very prominent Labour campaigner said vile stuff on Twitter. And you, you know, you, you've shown that tweet from Corbyn there. Corbyn's job in all of this should have been to come out and condemn absolutely the racist abuse of, of Sajid Javid, but he didn't do that. Sajid himself, who was in the House of Commons, actually invited him to the dispatch box to do exactly that, and he didn't come. And this has been the problem with anti-Semitism. He didn't stamp on it early enough. He should have stamped on that two years ago, so three years ago. Point, he should have stamped I, on Can I give Labour a right to reply? And this is uh, the Shadow Chancellor, John McDonnell, addressing this very point. This issue of racism, anti-Semitism racism, has affected our community. We cannot tolerate it. And we can't tolerate racism in any party. Across parties, we've got to campaign I, against anti-Semitism and racism overall. You know, I um, think anybody who is genuinely committed to the struggle against racism needs to call it out wherever it happens. I am somebody who has never voted Conservative, but I'm happy to say that I stand beside Sajid Javid when he is defending himself against racist abuse. I also want us to look at the Conservative Party, where there is also racism. This isn't just an issue for the left. We had a, a, a councillor who, who uh, shared a horrific racist joke, being reinstated to win the council, and then congratulated by the chair of the party. So this is a problem in society. Can and, you know, get... just listening to you, Karen, I, I hear you, but in a way, I feel like you're... This is a... We live in a country where racism is pervasive. Can this I, is not I... the only place it manifests. It is a huge so problem for all no of us. So there is no place for racism, but I also, if you flip this the other way, look at the celebration of what migration and what ethnic minorities have brought to this country. It's less than 15% of the population of this country. And look at what they've contributed over the decades. We wouldn't be one of the top ten economies in the world the entrepreneurial spirit. without, without <laughs> right. the contribution yeah, right. yeah. of the immigrants you over the find years. You disagreeing with that. So, and so, I think yeah, should be celebrating. Yeah, well, I'm sure we're going to hear politicians <laughs> saying we will not tolerate it. Politicians like point. him. Yeah. And they yeah. have tolerated yeah. it. They've tolerated well, they anti-Semitism for years. They don't act on years. it. That's the truth. Well, you know, they Corbyn, should act. It's not Corbyn's fault that he has members of his party that, that tweet this vile stuff. However, it is his responsibility to talk about it and to stamp it out by sacking members from the party. Nick, who do this? To your, to, to your yeah. earlier point, I think the key here for me mm. is to assume the way somebody will vote based on their skin colour and then to consider them somehow treacherous to their ethnicity or identity if they don't toe that line yeah. is the issue. Yeah. Um, voter, voter patterns are a lot more complex than uh, reducing them down to one single issue. So, for example, Sajid Javed um, and, and actually generally minority voters who vote Conservative uh, may have overlooked some of the historic racism they believe or allege could have existed in the Conservative. Party because they may have been more disgusted, for example, by the anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. But people make multiple calculations when they're voting, and it isn't only down to one issue. And I think that's the nub of it for me, to reduce okay. somebody down to you know, their ethnicity and then define their political allegiance based on that, for me, is okay. racism.